Hello everyone and welcome to another SVLINKS video. For this week's video, we're going to go over a post-mortem look at receiving our kit from Shoning Design and we will show you what we've been up to since that kit arrived at our build site. If you aren't familiar with the post-mortem, I'll explain. The dictionary defines this as an examination of a dead body to determine the cause of death. However, the term is also commonly used when a review of a project is done on completion. Back when I was a game designer in, and producer, when we reached the end of a game project, we would look at what we had done and what had not gone smoothly, and then discuss how we could improve our methodology for the next game project. It's important to note that these postmortem evaluations are not about laying blame on anyone, but about defining issues we ran into and how we can be better prepared to handle them the next time. So, we're going to do a postmortem look at receiving our kit catamaran right now. The problem you have as a do-it-yourself boat builder ordering a kit catamaran is that this is the one and only time you're likely to build a kit. So, you'll not have the chance to improve the next time you construct a boat, which means you're going to learn things the hard way, and make a lot of mistakes. And we certainly did. Unfortunately, that means this postmortem will not help us, but we're going to do one anyway in the hopes that it will help some of you future DIY builders. So, let's begin this postmortem with an option we were given by Shoning Design about how we wanted to receive our foam laminated panels. The first choice is to receive the various pieces in the large 9 foot by about 26 foot panels. They're mostly cut, yet still attached by small tabs. Alternatively, you may have the manufacturer completely cut them out and they will arrive as individual parts. On being asked to make this choice, we were concerned that all the pieces would come in an unorganized pile if we had them separated, but Shoning assured us that the pieces would come grouped by their type. Unfortunately, this did not turn out to be the case. As you may see in these images, Advanced Material Solutions did group the pieces, but Shoning's loaders decided to ungroup them and stack them into a big, single block. <laughs> I was told later that they did this to protect the pieces from damage during shipment, and now that we've unpacked the container, we did find that none of our parts were damaged. So that idea did work. Yeah. And given the choice of grouping them with possible damage or putting them into a big jigsaw stack that was less likely to sustain damage, well, I guess we would choose the stack. It's just that up until a couple of days before it arrived, we didn't expect to receive our kit that way. The issue was, we only received images of showing the way it was stored in the container two days before the kit was going to arrive at our doorstep. So one improvement you could make is to ask your Shoning representative to send you images of the packed container as soon as they finish the packing process. They'll help you plan ahead. Our next word of advice is that if you take them separated, expect it to take a long time to unload, about 800 pieces. So that you aren't caught with too few people to unload the container swiftly. According to Robert at Shoning Design in South Africa, it took 10 workers eight hours to pack the container. It took our 20 person crew three hours to unload it. You can figure out the time you will likely take your crew from our experience. For example, if you just have 10 people, expect six hours to unload, etc. But now that we know how the pieces come if you choose to have them separated, let's talk about the advantages for each method so that you may make an informed choice when they ask you how you want the kit configured. Option number one, all the pieces are still attached in large panels. A, the first advantage here is organization. You'll know where each piece is located because they'll give you a diagram like this for each panel with the pieces clearly marked. For B, you will need less storage space. If you're limited in space or want to keep the panels in a single 40-foot high cube shipping container, 
then keeping them in the original panels is the way to go. The large panels can be stood up on their sides and will take up the least amount of space possible. Then you can just slot them in with the panels you would need later in the back and the ones you need sooner in the front. D. It will be less expensive. This one is only true if you're paying for your square footage of storage. In our case, we ended up having to purchase a second shipping container because you cannot fit these separated pieces into a 40 foot container and still keep them nicely grouped together in sorted piles. And even then, you'll need to build shelving to make it work. So this cost us about $3,000 extra for the storage space over if we had taken them in the large panels instead. Okay, <laughs> now let's look at the other choice. Option number two, pieces are pre-cut and separated. So A, the first advantage here is less work while you're building the boat. You won't have to cut out each piece yourself. This isn't hard. There are just some small tabs to cut with a jigsaw, but with 642 foam pieces and 145 MDF boards, that will take some time. B, the next advantage is weight. Moving each of those 68 full-size panels takes a lot of people. I'd say at least six. This is not only true when unloading them from the container, but each time you need to move one of these big panels from standing stack to cut out your next piece, it will take six workers. Typically, we only have three to four people at the build site on a daily basis. By having them separated, it allows you just two of us to move most pieces without any additional workers present. There'll still be a few days where we need more people since there are about 15 large panels, but there's only 15 days, not 68. And C, you will also get cleaner cuts. If you use a jigsaw to separate your pieces, your cuts will not be quite as nice as having them cut by the water jet at the time they were made. So, which method would we choose now that we have hindsight? With our smaller team of daily workers who will be building our boat, I think I would still have the pieces pre-cut. However, I would prepare differently for their arrival and expect the higher cost. First, you're going to have to pay for some extra time beyond the two hours the dredge company gives you for unloading. Secondly, depending on your situation, you may have to pay for more storage space. Therefore, I would have the second container already on the site with storage shelves pre-built inside. This would have saved my poor unloading crew a whole lot of time and hard work. They ended up moving all the pieces three times, and this week my smaller crew had to move them a fourth time. <laughs> if we had the container with the shelving waiting, the workers could have just sorted them into their storage space as they were removed from the shipping container. However, if you have six or more daily workers while building the boat and you want to save some money or have less storage space, then we would sit, choose to have the pieces still attached to their panels. Since we did not have this foreknowledge and did not realize how much space we were needed for storage, we had to scramble this week to get an additional shipping container delivered to the build site. So. They arrived on a, a double truck, so what he's going to have to do is move it from the trailer onto the truck because we only have 65 feet of space to get it onto the lot. So he's got to do a little bit of work here to get that thing in there. Another thing you must consider when you're getting a kit is how you want your container to be delivered. There are three options we had to decide on. The first is if we wanted to purchase the container that came with the kit inside. Let's put that on hold for a second and take a look at our shipping container arriving this week. What we're going to try to do is put it four feet from the fence over here, right in line with the other shipping container, but again, slightly offset so that the big panels from the big container can get out. Okay, while we watch this shipping container get unloaded, let's talk about why we didn't purchase the container that came with the kit inside. The main issue there was cost. The price for that in-service container was very high. For us, it was about $7,000 more than buying a used, empty, watertight container locally. 
If you've decided to receive your laminate foam pieces and MDF separated, then you'll have to take all of them out of the container anyway to sort them out of that big pile. In that case, you might as well just unload them from the arriving container and load them into your pre-purchased container and sort them as they're moved. The second thing we had to consider was if we wanted the container to be unloaded from the truck onto the ground or just left on the truck while your crew unloaded the contents. Again, the difference is price. It often costs more to have a truck that will unload the packed container and then reload it after it is emptied to be hauled away. We decided to save the extra fees and leave the container on the truck. In that scenario, you must be prepared to unload everything from that height. We kept four in the container to move items from the back to the door while the rest of the crew started hauling them away. The third decision we had to make was which type of shipping container to purchase. Shipping containers come in various length and standard height or high cube. The kit is shipped in a high cube container. The reason is simple. To get the full size panels out of a standard height container, they must be leaned over to get through the lower door opening. That is a hassle with these heavy full size panels. Since we did not have to deal with leaning our full size panels over, we ordered a 40 foot high cube container. Basically the same size as the arriving container from South Africa. But for our second container, we purchased the less expensive 20 foot standard height model. This is fine since we have a lot of the panels separated into pieces. We put the larger panels in the high cube and the small groupings of pre-cut pieces on shelves in the standard height container. Speaking of that, let's take a look at the smaller container and how we built the shelves into it and sorted the various pieces into the container. Our issue was pretty simple. We wanted to create these big shelves that would hold each of the individual pieces, but we didn't want to drill holes through the metal because then we would have to weld them up later when we went to sell this container after the boat gets built. So we decided that we would do it a different method. These are the frames that'll hold the shelves that are four by eight sheets. And so uh, we're gonna build, a, I don't know, six of these frames first. Once we completed the six frames, all we had to do then was rip the plywood so that it would fit properly for length. The width was already set at the four feet between the two by fours. So we got out our skill saw and cut these panels to the right lengths. Then it was just a matter of assembling it all inside of the shipping container. So we carted it all inside and started setting up the frames. All right, well, the shelving is almost done. We're going to uh, rip the last couple of sheets, install the shelves, and be able to stack all of our parts onto these shelves here. Uh, the MDF is going to go down the bottom here, and then we're going to separate all of the foam green stuff into all of these. Well, the shelves are finished up yesterday, and so we're starting to sort things onto the shelving here. And for example, these are our seat on the port side of the cockpit area, I believe. They could also be the seat inside, I'm not sure. I'll have to look that up on the plans, but extra tall or long pieces that don't fit on the shelves along the wall here. And John and I are here and uh, we're starting to load some of these sections in. So right here, we're just making piles of them right now and then we'll sort them into the back first. Uh, but these, for example, are helm pieces. They won't be needed for a little while. So we're gonna take those and put them on the top shelf in the back over there. So that's what we're up to. There you go. Uh, all right, so we've got all of the little pieces inside and they're all sorted now so that we know that CP entry is right there and so on and so forth. F cab, A cab and helm, winch, H step, T top. So all of them are marked as to where they are. A couple of very large pieces that won't fit on the shelves just stack right there and that's not much. Most of it all is on the shelves, easy to access 
easy to find what we want. And so that's a job well done. And thank, thank you, John. <laughs> he really helped today. Uh, so I would have been moving a lot of this by myself. Because why? Because Brian's off doing something else and uh, it's Sunday. And so uh, it was sort of an, a, a, a fill only day until John showed up and really helped. So we appreciate that. All right, uh, we're good for the day. So today we've been getting all this MDF for all the various forms for the top of the cabin and the cross beam at the front of the boat, the fore beam, and the canoes that we're gonna have to build. All these MDF boards are going into the new container over here. And they're going in all down here and we've sorted them into which we're going to need first and the things we'll need first will be out here in the front and things we need later are out there in the back so a little more work to go there next up we're going to move these nav station ones over here because we decided to use this for scrap pieces which are leftovers that when you cut all these out of these large nine by 28 foot panels, there's a lot of little pieces that are left over. We can use all that for constructing different things that weren't in the original plan. Okay, so we've got all the little piles up here, just pallets left. And uh, that's because everything is now inside this container. We've got stuff way up there, all the way down to the bottom and some bigger pieces uh, stacked over on the side. All the stuff on the side right here is off cut. So none of these are actually parts of the boat right now. They're stuff that we can build stuff out of later. Or if we uh, screw something up, we can use one of these to uh, make a new piece to fix it. So uh, all the scrap is uh, very useful stuff. And there's more. Now, over here inside the big container, as you can see, Say hello to Dale. Hi Dale. Dale. Hi Dale. I'm Brian. Hey. And uh, you can see we don't have a lot of panels inside of here right now. And that's because yeah, the big can... stack is going to land in this here. One, so that's what one. that stack is over there. And that's all going to be uh, slotted about another foot and a half out on each side here. So leave a good four foot aisle down the middle to pull these big panels out uh, when we get to the needing those big panels. But that will be a little while from now because first of all, the very first thing we're going to need are going to be these here because those are for the canoe and that is uh, what we're going to have to set up to do our strip planking of the hulls. And then after that we'll be getting the bulkhead stuff and that's here, there's some more of those forms. And all the bulkhead stuff is there or big pieces for the bulkheads are under that tarp right now. Marianne and I are moving the last pallet full of small pieces, which are the various offcuts or scrap. And these are going to go onto that shelf in the back that we reserved for it. And this will all be used eventually for some of the things that we're going to create. For example, there's a valance we're going to put around the top edge of the cockpit for some indirect lighting. And that wasn't in the plan, so we're going to need some uh, foam to do that. And we're also considering building a single bunk above the double bunk in one of the forward cabins. And again, we need scrap because that wasn't in the original plant. So there's quite a few different little things that we may change and add. And for doing all of that, we'll need uh, foam. And this stuff is hard to come by. So it's nice to have all of this extra stuff. So we're going to go stick it inside of the small container and put it onto that back shelf right now. Here we are, and that's the shelf we reserved, and Marianne's going to bring me some pieces, and I will insert them in and get them sorted, just like the rest of the different types of pieces we have in here ready to go. It's just going to make getting to what we want next so much easier. We can just walk in, find what we want. If we want a scrap piece, we go to the scrap pile. If we want one of the uh, helm pieces, we want one of the deck pieces, whatever it is, we know where it's at and we can go to get the next piece that we need to fiberglass into the boat. An organization like that, even though it took us a few days to get this all set up and organized in here, is going to really help when it comes time to start constructing the boat 
which is only about maybe a week away at uh, the most two weeks. So it all depends on the rain. It is going to rain again uh, right away, meaning this looks like a beautiful sunny day, and it is, but it's going to rain tomorrow, and so we had to get all of this stuff sorted and inside of here so that it wouldn't sit out in the rain anymore. The only pile that will be still out there is, and it's already covered with big plastic, is the larger pieces, and we'll move that at the end of the week. These are all the off-cut or scrap pieces. We put them in the container last because we wanted to make sure we got all of the other main pieces in. We did leave room in the back so that we could put these pieces in if we had the space. And we've got them all in now. It was a little awkward to get everything in here with all of the other pieces around us, but we really wanted to make sure we had the space before getting them in here. Now let's talk about unloading. One mistake we made in unloading our arriving container was to put the pieces down on the street first and sort them there before moving them again. We thought we could stretch wrap them in groups to make it easier to move them around and store them in our 40 foot high cube container. When it came time to stretch wrap them, we discovered that these small pieces did not cooperate. They're very slippery and are all kinds of different shapes. So some of them would slide as you tried to apply the stretch wrap. That process did not work well and we soon gave up. Worse yet, we discovered that separated into types, we didn't have enough room in the 40 foot container for all of these organized stacks. We didn't want to stack them all back into a single pile where we would have to move them again and dig down to reach the next panel we need. The thing is, you can guess at which groupings of panels you may need and stack them in that order, but in reality, you may find you need some in a different order than you guessed. By putting them on shelves, it allows us to reach the pieces we need at any given time and far more easily. So, in hindsight, we should have already had a second container with shelving built before the kit arrived. But that wasn't the case, and we just didn't realize how much space we would need until we actually saw the stacks. So here we are, a few days out after our kit arrived, building shelves in our second container. Let me explain what we would have done if we'd had this done ahead of time. As each piece was taken out of the arriving container, we'd have carried the mid and large size separate pieces straight into the 20 foot container putting the medium sized ones straight on the proper shelf or standing the larger ones up against the inner wall. Therefore, we would have only had to put the smaller pieces down outside the container while sorting them into piles by type. That way, we would have only lifted the medium and large sized pieces once. And once the medium sized and large sized pieces were out of the arriving container and on the shelves, then we would have moved the smaller pieces inside putting them on top of the same types of large and mid-sized pieces on the shelf. This would have been the most efficient way to unload them and sort them all, with the least number of times picking up a panel, once for large and medium and just twice for the small ones. Because we were not prepared, we picked up all the pieces four times, which was not fun or efficient. Now that we finished the shelves and loaded all the small and sorted parts into the shelves, let's move on to talking about what else we learned on receiving our kit. There are other things that you'll receive in your container when it arrives. Take the mast and boom. It's optional for you to order the mast and boom as part of your shipment since they are not part of the kit. Therefore, we could have purchased them locally and had them delivered. However, at Shoning's suggestion, we decided to purchase them from Sparcraft in South Africa since they were closely with Shoning Design, also in South Africa. That way, we knew the mast and boom would have been set up properly for our Shoning boat design. If you also choose to purchase from Sparcraft and have those spars arrive with your kit, be aware that it will take 15 to 20 people to unload <laughs> those heavy items out of the container, if it's still on the truck. If you have the container unloaded from the truck, you could get away with about 10 people. Either way, you'll have to contend with them being slung together from the ceiling of the container. This caused some concern 
and took time to make a plan. Since we came up with a solution that worked, here's how we decided to get them down. We loosened every other ratchet strap supporting the two mast pieces. Then we took those and attached them to only one section of the two hanging mast pieces. This separated the two sections onto their own set of straps. Then we used the ratchets to drop one section at a time by opening the ratchet wide. This drops them in shorter jerks. We did one strap at a time, alternating back and forth to keep the mast fairly level. This brought it down to a height where it could be lifted with about 10 workers, while a few other workers removed the now loose straps from around the piece. Then we carried the mast section out to the end of the container where more waiting workers on the ground could take over. Then we could just repeat this for the second mast section. We could have lowered both together the same way using the ratchets. If you want to do that method, then make sure you take out all the foam panels from the container before you begin, since you will need to lower both mast pieces all the way to the floor of the container rather than just to waist high, like in our method. That's because you need to separate them after they are no longer hanging from the straps together. I like our method of separating them with straps first because picking those two heavy mass sections back up off the ground after lowering them down to remove the straps from both would have been a more difficult lift. This way, the mast was already at a nice height to carry it to the end of the container or out if you have your container on the ground. All we had to do was walk each mast piece forward toward the door and then lower the leading edge as we approached the door so that more of our crew down on the street could take it from us. Here's another thing to think about in your kit. When it comes to getting your epoxy, you'll need to be aware of the temperature where you're building your boat. If your location is like ours, the weather gets above 90 degrees and that will ruin your epoxy. And we're talking about twenty dollars to $25,000 worth. So we're constructing a small, special insulated shed in a shaded location to house our epoxy and we'll be installing a thermostat controlled air conditioner in that shed to keep the epoxy below 90 degrees at all times. Another thing to be aware of is that nothing in the container arrived on standard pallets. We rented a pallet jack to move palleted items forward to where a forklift could pick them up only to find out that this was a waste of money. The only thing on pallets were the MDF pieces, but they were on a double wide and double long pallet. So unless your forklift has nine foot tongs, or three meter, then a standard length forklift can't lift this huge pallet, which means you'll have to hand unload all 145 MDF pieces individually like we did. We did have our own pallets there and loaded some of the contents onto them at times. You should also be prepared for some of the things that you expect to arrive in your container, not making it before the container departs South Africa. In our case, our Nanny Diesel was delayed by three months, and our barrels of epoxy and hardener were denied at loading time as hazardous materials. In an all-new twist, <laughs> Shoney learned that they now have to ship the epoxy and hardener in a special hazardous materials container and meet other requirements, like changing them into smaller buckets. This change in our shipping conditions cost us thousands of extra dollars, though Shoney was not to blame for this. Our container was the first time that they had had to ship the epoxy and hardener separately. And they've been doing this for 35 years. Fortunately, your quote from Shoning will likely already contain the extra cost for shipping the epoxy separately. And you won't experience the delays we faced due to this change in policy by the shipping companies. Shoning spent several weeks trying to find any ship that would take them as before, but were unsuccessful. However, you should still ask Shoning about this while talking about your total cost to purchase your kit. Speaking of other costs, while telling you the price to purchase a kit, Shoning will estimate the cost of shipping to your location. Be aware this is a very rough estimate and is likely far off of the actual total fees since they're not estimating the cost at your end, only what the shipping will cost to get it to your location on the container ship. Even then, 
They're only giving you an estimate that can swing a few thousand dollars depending on your destination. All totaled, our shipping costs will end up costing around $7,000 more than their original estimate of $7,000. Meaning we'll end up paying about $14,000, twice as much as they estimated. This is partly due to the engine delay, which is a problem from the supply chain issue from our nanny and the change in how epoxy has to be shipped. What you want is all of it to come in one container since that will likely cost less. So make sure you look into import taxes, duties, drage, customs agents, and a whole host of other small fees that we had to pay at the arrival of our first container and will again have to pay for the nanny and epoxy shipments. So save some funds beyond what you get in the estimate from Shoning Design to handle international shipping and the unforeseen extra costs. So in hindsight, and to sum up, we would still have had the factory separate the kit parts, but would have been more prepared with enough storage space with shelving already built. We would have sorted the kit as it came out of the arriving container and taken most parts straight into the two containers. We would have doubled the estimated shipping cost and been prepared for some items not to make it in this container. We would have had a plan ready on how to lower the two mass sections instead of having to come up with one on the spot. And remember to have a temperature controlled storage space ready for your epoxy and hardener if you live in a location where the weather gets hot. And though a forklift will still be useful, we would not have had bothered with a pallet jack. Also, make sure to have a lot of people to unload the container or be prepared to pay extra for more time as the truck and driver wait. Even if you have a lot of people, I doubt you can get it done in less than three hours. If you want to unload the MDF on a forklift, make sure you have extra long tongs to lift a double wide and long pallet. Be prepared for the epoxy and hardener to arrive in a different shipping container and all the costs that will add in as custom shipping and drayage. Oh, and have gloves for all your crew unloading. The edges of the panels can be a little abrasive, though getting a water jet cut rather than router or even laser cut makes the edge cuts much cleaner. That's one of the options that will be offered to you by Shoney Designs, at least when ordering from South Africa, and an option I highly recommend. So that about concludes our post-mortem and some of what we've been working on since the kit arrived to get ready to start building SV links. Now, Let's talk about what's coming next. We must raise our canopy shade structure, even though it isn't hot and sunny yet. The problem is we have limited space on the lot and once the boat starts getting constructed, it will be hard to get a bobcat in there to help us raise the canopy structure, which is very large and tall. As soon as that structure is up, we'll begin to start working on forms and then pouring cement pads, which we'll use to work on the bridge deck floor, seam all the bulkheads together and strengthen up the edges and start strip planking the canoe sections of the two hulls. So if the rain cooperates, we'll start construction of the kit in a week or two at the most. All right, well, thanks for watching this week's video about our postmortem and what we were doing at the build site this week, getting prepared to start constructing our boat. That's gonna begin really soon. But as always, we would like to thank our patrons and hear their names around. And of course, all of you who watch, because we really appreciate you. And every week we just want to make sure we give you the best video we can and uh, let you know all the stuff that we're doing, good and bad. So that's why we did this postmortem to help you out with the, the mistakes we sort of made. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click on the bell icon to be notified of our next video. And next week we will get to raising the canopy and possibly getting to the cement pads on the video. So we'll see you then. Bye. Bye.